from Wakefield. It's the Ice Team Meme Show starring Noel Dog, inviting you to join Noel Dog and his guest this week, Brennan Doherty, as he returns back to the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Noel Dog. And welcome back to the show. This is a segment I like to call What Happened This Past Week with Noel Dog, where I have to talk about the things that happened this past calendar week, any things in the news, entertainment, sports, and so on and so forth, anything that would be considered news where they're where they're due. And let's begin. According to the CDC, people who have been vaccinated can visit each other mask free indoors but you know when they're outdoors in public they must wear the mask that reading the second half of the statement anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers alike all across the south and midwest start to hunger down in the west and northeast like foreigners coming to ellis island in the 1930s Brunch. the world was watching last night as interview legend oprah winfrey sat down for an interview with prince harry and his wife Meghan markle and why they left the royal family during the interview the royal family were accused of being both cold and racist in regards to the child archie and him not gaining the title of prince boy you know your life must be so tough where, you know, you get everything taken care of, the best travel, the best doctors, and, you know, just the best life, and you quit just because your child won't get a meaningless title. It's being reported that NBA All-Star forward Blake Griffin has reportedly taken a deal from the Brooklyn Nets at the end of last week after being bought out from the Detroit Pistons earlier this season. Good for Blake willingly wanting to play 40 minutes a game for weeks at a time when Harden, Irving, Durant sit down and pat and mope and act like babies for weeks at a time. Brunch. According to a story from Routers, a rare Kobe Bryant rookie card has sold for $1.795 million after a rookie Tom Brady card recently just sold for over a million dollars as well. Hearing that Bryant's card sold for nearly $2 million, his wife's mother said, for the hell of it to sue that person for something frivolous. Brunch. Space Jam sequel has been in the news this past week and has got some attention for some movie decisions made. One being that according to some people, Trixie isn't as thick as she was before in the first movie. We have two male overweight bus drivers to complain on Facebook about something stupid and irrelevant. I forgot the film companies catered to the people's needs of getting stiff as a board from a cartoon character. Boomsh. According to an interview on the own network, Papa John's ex-CEO, John Schnatter, has been working for the last 20 months, quote, to get rid of this N-word in my vocabulary, end quote. To doing this, the people of own gave him a cookie for acting like those, quote, do nothing Democrats. They hate so much. Each day, Schneider says that we're less than 10 times a day. He gets three boxes of pizza. Brunch. According to the reports, the SCOTUS has denied in any hearings in regards to former President Trump's case in regards to voter fraud in Wisconsin. Trump now officially has, has lost all of his post-election challenges in the Supreme Court. Trump has entered a rare territory as not even the Baltimore Orioles have won more than in their field than he has. Brunch. The Empire Burger King UK has caught some publicity after putting out a controversial tweet stating, quote, women belong in the kitchen. As International Women's Month got underway recently, more women jumped on the account faster than Ted Cruz escaping to Cancun during a statewide weather storm in Texas. Brunch. What was even worse is that Burger King kept opening that wound further defending the tweet they put out. Burger King defending their misogynistic tweet and so Trump's followers defending him even after me found that disabled reporter a few years ago. Brunch. And some interesting news, President Biden's dogs, both Major and Champ, have been brought back to the Biden family home in Delaware after one bit a White House security officer. Thinking it was Christmas in March, Republicans and far-right wingers woke up with bounce and bounds of glee that one would have thought they won the lottery on top of it being Christmas. This will give them enough ammo you would, uh, you would have thought they were the soldier who took out Pat Tillman. Brunch. According to Adam Schefter, the Dallas Cowboys are giving uh, quarterback Dak Prescott a four-year $160 million deal, including a record $126 million guaranteed. The first two years averaged $42 million per year. It's a lot of money just for the quarterback to help the team them go 8-8 eight and eight the next four years. Brunch. According to Bloomberg, it's being reported that New York City high schools will reopen for in-person learning March 22nd. If Cohen didn't have it bad enough in dealing with his horny and lonely behavior and aren't being able to do arithmetic, correct still people keeling over, now he's got to worry about TikTokers going back to school too early. Boom. That's what happened this past week in the news with Noel Dog. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the remainder of the show with my guest this week. And welcome back for another edition of the program on this Wednesday, the 9th of March, 2021 edition of the show. We have another special guest joining us today. Before I begin my cordiality in regards to the guests, I'd like to do our little PSA. If you like what you're watching here on YouTube and do us a favor here at ITM Studios, leave us a like with that thumbs up button, subscribe to the show, turn on the notification bell, finally click that share and share with all your friends and family to share the fun with everyone you know. Because, come on, who wouldn't want to, you know, know what's going on here in the fucking Ice Team meme show with yours truly and his wonderful guests each week? Now, now, as the kids say, if you're hip and gangster and enjoy what you're listening to on your preferred audio service, click the heart button, follow the podcast and share the show with all your friends and family as well, because, you know, some people are cultured and listen to stuff. Um, and finally, I know times are tough and money might be tight right now as well, but if you could take the time and donate whatever you can to the show on anchor.fm, which is the hosting site for the show, it'd mean the world. Donate to the show along with the other support I'm asking for helps both the continuation and increasing success of the program, not to mention the improvement of it as well. 
because, you know, I want to make it big with this. With that being said, I would now like to bring on my guest for this week's edition of the Ice Team Meme Show. My guest for this week's edition of the show is extremely funny, the multi-talented, and they were all great guys, especially to yours truly. He's the one and only Mr. Brennan Doherty making his return back to the program. Thanks for coming back on the show this week, my friend. Absolutely, Nolan. Pleasure, pleasure to be here. Oh, yeah. No, I remember the last time you came on, you you were deeply enthralled, if that's the correct word, and you you, you were looking forward to coming back. And I had someone scheduled. This this is the bullshit I was dealing with. I had messaged, I messaged someone after I recorded the episode. I messaged the following week's person after I recorded and say, hey, um, if you could come on, I'd greatly appreciate that. Obviously, I'd work with this schedule. He said, that's fine. Afternoons work. And I said, okay, two o'clock on Tuesday. Does that work? He is definitely sure. He's one of those people who saves all the messages in the chat. Yesterday, two o'clock, 1.30 comes. I said, hey, about 10 minutes, I'll send you the link and we can go from there. No message, no message returned back. It's like four hours later, just, then he's opening the message. He's like, oh, yo, I slept through my fucking alarm. I, I slept through, I slept till like 2 a.m. I, I slept late, sorry. It's like, can we do this tomorrow then? Same time, sure nothing then about 10 minutes before he's like oh yeah just give me a few minutes nothing so i said well fuck i want to put something out this week and i said who can i have on last minute that will gladly come on that has no problem with immediately coming on and i thought of yours truly um saying as the other people that i know uh definitely uh are slow to respond you're quick to respond and you said yeah sure i just gotta finish working that'll be it so i definitely uh, appreciate uh you being on, being on here for sure, man. And I, and, I, and I have a feeling, you know, the last few episodes have been in a slump kind of with a viewership being a little lower than it usually is. Not saying it's phenomenally high, but I have a feeling with the, with, with the duo that's on this, this week and uh, the content that I have put onto the YouTube uh, podcast videos to react to, uh, it's going to be a, a great episode that's going to help bring up the show. But um, it, it's been about a month since you, were, since you were here last and we talked last on the show, but how's life been for you um, in this COVID life so far? Ah, uh, it's, it's been pretty busy. I mean, like, I honestly, like, people, I, I think people act like uh, you're going to get less work because, like, it's virtual and stuff. But, yeah, yeah I've sort of been, like, over mobbed with stuff right now. Uh, yeah, just kind of have some stuff in the works as far as, like, different projects and, and all that good stuff. But COVID, um, I don't know. There's really nothing, like, too different about Boston right now. People are still yeah. going up restaurants and stuff like that i think there's a bit of hope in sight just because like the yeah. vaccines and, you know people are feeling a little bit more secure but i know you um had mentioned uh, the last time you were on the program the uh there was a project you were reaching out to people like idols or whoever it was they looked up to it has have you had any prog progress with that uh project funny you mentioned that uh i actually was I had a phone call with like one of my I, to say he's an idol is like an understatement but like i i talked to him yesterday and i got some of the most like insightful fucking advice i've ever had in my entire like he was i don't know it was i'm still pretty shook by it like it happened like yesterday which is was it positive crazy. stuff or was it negative stuff it was uh i don't want to say it was negative but it was like it, it was more just like he kind of saw what we were trying to do with the format of um, the project. And he basically was like giving me advice about it saying like, uh, without going into too much detail, he just yeah. was like, he was just like, I feel like what you're trying to do is like, uh, is like interesting enough, but having some overarching narrative uh, thing behind an actual documentary because this is a documentary project it ultimately will it, it's going to come off kind of inorganic because you're, you're you're the people you're having on you're sort of uh like trying to shape what they're saying to fit your narrative and i think if you find these people interesting enough you'll rather than having like more broad questions that's going to kind of tie the story all together like sort of be more observant and you know like ask specific questions about them and then within the editing process like you know try to find some story to it and i thought like fucking a dude that was like <laughs> some incredible advice like and this again this is like one of my oh yeah idols like i'm not even like the they're like my favorite band of 
yeah. full time. And he, yeah, he really did just take the time to talk about me. And he was just like, just call me back in a couple months when you have shit rolling a little bit more and we'll talk more. Yeah. Like, good luck. And I'm like, fucking hey. Well, and, and that's, and it's, it's, it's funny because, and that's, that's what makes, you know, whatever you're doing in life more interesting. You want more passionate because you have someone like that who, they didn't have to call you. They didn't have to do any of this stuff, and they took the time out to give you uh, uh, a critique or some insight on how to do it. That makes the world go around, and you know that doesn't happen a lot with other people. And for them to do that for you, it definitely is something that makes you more enjoyable. I, I know with myself. I mean, I haven't you know reached out to anyone big time yet, besides obviously the guests I've had on so far this season. Um, but you know, the, the uh, I have a love, you know, for the Beach Boys and their music, and I, I know you know that. And um, they're As they're all I. they're all sorts of you know groups on Facebook for any for whatever you find interesting, music, entertainment, and whatever it may be. And I'm a, I'm a part of a bunch of them, and you know, I, I've connected with people, and then there have been people who have played with them in their background band who are part of them. Then I've also, and although it's not as big as what you're doing, but you know, a friend of them on Facebook and they've done the vice versa and that you know you know meant that made my day because here they are something like that following you know someone's asking them to friend request on facebook and then they accept it then they friend you back it is is something that's amazing because someone like myself rhode island is, is not known for putting together great concerts and or uh being home for numerous celebrities so to be able to have that chance to you know have that happen is pretty impressive but that's providence like, did have like a fucking amazing music scene and like from like the like 97 to oh yeah 2000 and whatever like a really really good like punk scene yeah like they like all those like RISD kids yeah. like they really like I mean people who like emerge from like the like there's like a like a bunch of even like notable artists like I mean like some of my favorite bands are from Providence like there's the band Lightning Bolt and uh um the uh the guy from the OCs uh, John Dwyer, he's from, uh, he, I think he's from like Riverside, but he yeah. moved to Providence. Okay. And he actually had a really fun story, funny story about, but it, cause he was like, he had told us on, uh, you know, Mark Maron's podcast, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> he had, he was on Mark Maron's podcast and he was like, and, uh, he was talking about Providence in like the nineties and whatever, and it kind of being this sort of, uh, it was very like drug infested and very like mob around yeah. too. And he, <laughs> So him and his buddy were like, you know, just, I don't know if they were selling drugs or whatever, but like, uh, basically what's his, uh, his, uh, Dwyer's friend, uh, was good friends with the daughter of, uh, famous mayor of Providence, Buddy Sands. <laughs> oh boy. Oh yeah. And, yeah. and, and. <laughs> what had happened was she was like pretty like she was a party girl and she um what had happened she would be like i want to do drugs here and like john would be like yo like i i don't think we should be around her while she's yeah. like dude if she fucking dies like we're done we are yeah. done and so but <laughs> you're fucked if, if that's happened you're yeah. uh, you're in a cement bathtub no that's what i'm saying like fucking like buddy Cianci was like a mob dude if i'm not yeah. correct yeah it's fun, funny shit well it's yeah. just the, the whole well i mean even before the 90s i mean stuff was definitely being put on rhode island but there's not that it's not as busy anymore but it's still impressive when you have people that you look up to and they take the time to connect with you because a lot of those times people they get all sorts of stuff like that all the time and they do take the time out to uh do that is definitely um is but um, what I what I wanted to also go back briefly when we were talking about what's going on the last month, for you, you know, because you're still working at the the mech type place at uh school, are you? Yeah, no, I just got back yeah. from work. Um, uh, what's what's it been like though on on campus in the last month since we've last talked? And how cases have been and whatnot? If you've been paying attention. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I, like. I obviously and and I think Emerson anticipated it was going to be worse like just be just because like the you know uh the second wave didn't necessarily start until like November and yeah. that's when the case was like so I think like last semester Emerson had like eight cases like oh, wow. it wasn't anything big but now we're having like 10 cases a week or something uh, which is still which is not that big yeah like, it's not that big but it's 
but it's but it's but but like it was it wasn't something that they like didn't anticipate you know yeah like because um be, because like uh there's a there's a new variant that yeah. is kind of <laughs> circling around and b uh I think more people just came back to Emerson. Yeah. Like, and yeah, but it's nothing like I wasn't expecting because I, I knew true, true. shit was kind of getting way worse. But I I don't know. States are doing like pretty good now. I mean, like, well, I mean, R- Rhode Island isn't, you know, that bad. I mean, the, the whole fucking Greek life has, you know, raised the amount of cases on, on the campus. So, you know, they're, they're starting to become more cautious. And now, you know, I'm on the club tennis team, so I have to get tested every fucking week. Which yeah. is stupid, and after I have to email the vice president and of mine was uh, uh, that I got tested and whatnot. But it's it's funny, it's unfortunate because then you have you have states like Texas and Pennsylvania and all those other fucking Trump ass eating states that uh, reopen their state and then they take away masks, no mask mandates, restaurants and other businesses can open to full capacity, and it's like what the fuck are you doing? There's three fucking strands coming to the states, and it's just it, it's unfortunate because it's become such a political statement. And I hate talking about politics a great deal, but you can't you you can't ignore it. And it's just it, it's it's ridiculous because it, it, it shouldn't be what it is. But these places just clearly don't care enough. It is clearly a political thing. I, it's always been from the start. Yeah. And and, and uh, Orange Man kind of set the tone for that. Yeah. I'm not saying I love Biden. Like oh yeah yeah I know yeah. no, definitely yeah. But like, uh, yeah, um. Because in some ways Biden's not like I mean he's he's made some he's like done some like pretty progressive things but yeah yeah he's not, he's not he's kind of a he's kind of a weirdo like I'm not gonna <laughs> like he's he he's I don't know I I you know I, listen his fucking I, dog I, I, he is fucking dog bit some staff some security staff member the other day and they had to ship both dogs back to Delaware by themselves and they threw the dog bit on the side of the White House and. <laughs> I was like, that's going to give enough ammo to the Fox News people that they're going to think it's Christmas. I definitely am more far left than what Biden is. So like, I'm never, but like, I, I am, I am like, I don't know, like I was very surprised about like the very quick turnover in sort of undoing Trump's like. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I know it was a lot. It was no, no. getting rid of a lot of stuff. And of course that drove people crazy. Um, I, I do have to give credit to him though. And some, some, in some sense, because you know, you know, he did, he, he, he wanted to get testing. He wanted to get more people to be tested, more vaccines out yeah. and more people, to, which is great. And we should do it. Cause you know, I don't want to be, no one wants to be here forever. Um, and the one thing that frustrated me, um, not about him, but there's someone, you know, cause you, all over Instagram, you, people follow people who, you know, post stuff on their stories to get people attention. And they want to be like, Oh, this, uh, it's this month. It's a uh, blue sock fucking month or, uh, all this other stuff that, you know, it's like something that some cause or some like travesty that pe- they need people to click on their link. And someone posted this thing, some uh, girl who we went to school with and she's like, Biden's all the things that Biden's already failed us. She gave up on the $15 minimum wage, gave up on this thing. And I'm like, the fuck this motherfucker has been office for a month. Um, he is the, the, the vaccines have gone up. Not to mention the fifteen dollar minimum wage that he couldn't get. He want, said he was going to get through. He couldn't get through because both it was a bipartisan issue that both said that they didn't want to do it. On top of it, he and tr- on top of them putting it into the COVID relief plan that was two trillion dollars. And it's like, do you has Biden killed four hundred thousand fucking people? No, no. yeah, no, I, I get it. Yeah, and obviously, like from an idealistic standpoint, I would have kind of rather yeah and but but then again when what you're saying like he like he hasn't been in office that long. yeah he's got like a million things to juggle like yeah but from an idealistic standpoint like do i think he could be doing more yeah but like oh I'm, yeah I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna you know at this point just like kind of hope for the best and whatever it's i don't know he people are acting like the jokes are gonna end with trump but this dude is so like he's one of the weirdest people I think I've ever. No, definitely. Seen I mean, in the president. <laughs> I mean, definitely. There's definitely moments when he, you know, even on the campaign trail, when it was like, well, what the fuck is this man saying? Like, like it's You're not a- the fact that like he stuttered or like any of that shit, but like he'd say something and be completely against whatever he, you know, he says he he was. Well, I don't. Need, I'm not even really talking about the stuttering because I just. I he's like he actually like if you if you know this about him he was like. He had a very bad speech impediment. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, like that. That's just like yeah, but just just his it's like I feel like old people insults are infinitely so funny. Like it's essentially like listening to Polly Walnuts like say oh. something like that. 
No, but like he like there, he was talking to some woman about like the whole uh, like on his campaign trail, and the insult was like something you would see in like a fucking like like old time like like it's a wonderful life or something. He's just like, of course she didn't know that you're a lying dog face pony soldier. I'm like, what <laughs> dog? What are like, you talking? He's like, he's like, come on, man, shut up. Shut up, man. Well, you're a loser in a hard hat. <laughs> you probably work around garbage. The thing I the thing I loved about him the most when he was on the campaign trail is it always like, you know, my grandmother always used to say when I sat on her lap, she used to say, uh, Joey, they treat people how you want to be treated. And I'm like, you gotta every time you go on TV, your grandmother's got a saying or your grandfather's got a saying. And it's like, or he was like, um, my grandfather was like, you know, them two a ma- them two are happily dating each other. Man and man can be together and all this stuff. And that's great, but was your grandfather really saying, talking about, you know, how it's okay for gay people to be together, which is, you know, nothing against that, but like, yeah, he, no, I mean, what, what, okay, at the end of the day, I think what really matters is now, like, I'm not crazy about, uh, like, Biden or Kamala, I, I'm glad that Trump's out of office, like, I wish oh, yeah. we could have gotten somebody a little bit more progressive, but, or younger, I, or, yeah, or not, like, eight years old <laughs> yeah or not yeah but what kind of matters now i think and what i'm sort of grateful for is that maybe it's kind of a wolf in chief's clothing where like they say they're going to do all this shit but they aren't but it kind of has shown where kamala and uh joe have been kind of voting in the right direction yeah. you know what i'm saying whereas like we won't be like it I don't I don't at this point I don't give a shit about like you know how they voted in the past or whatever in their opinions towards stuff as long as they're you know feeling a certain way now where they're good, we're gonna see some actual progression and all that shit uh you know what I'm saying like that oh, no, that's yeah, yeah. what matters now and well, so the, yeah that's a bit it, of a it's political... just it, it's it, it the thing is like and I have to agree I don't think they're not gonna the, the thing is though there's been so much you know controversy and you know turmoil and stuff like that that the previous administration had created and generated that there's so much that they have to try their best to reverse that and get rid of it so they can have a fresh slate although i don't think anything is going to change in the near future hopefully (laughs) trumpy doesn't run again in 2024 or create a new party um Uh, dude i think if anything his fucking creepy sons will run Ew, God, his his coke addict uh, son. I I honestly think Don, and this might be controversial. I think I get more freaked out by Don Jr. than I oh, do yeah. Trump. Oh, because he's like, younger and he can he he he's got more. Fucking oh my God! Oh, he is he, definitely crazy. No, uh, he he like I don't know. He literally I think he he has a book called like like liberal tears or something oh, yeah. like that like what a fucking moron like yeah. he's su- he's such an idiot i know that they were fucked when when that came out with the story where um all the kids were um were curating some like a uh, fund for kids with cancer and they were just taking the money back and using it for their own gain like in 2011 but i just i i know we were fucked when um the, the republicans were focusing more on dr seuss being canceled the six books instead of uh, like actual like United States issues that we need to solve and yeah which at the end of the day like they are just they're recalling those like random five books that honestly I read a lot of Dr. Seuss when I was a kid yeah. I don't th- I, I think I might have remember went to the zoo that, that that I think I remember reading that but the old, other ones like who gives a shit bro yeah. like like why why is that your top priority like whenever yeah. I Whenever I see fucking Ben Shapiro go on his like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. his yeah, yeah, yeah. weird little like <laughs> I am uh, the biggest fan of Star Wars. Yeah, like w- whenever I see him go on these like little tangents about fucking nothing, I'm like, dog, like shouldn't you be like actually talking instead of talking about like social issues, why aren't aren't you talking about like being a fiscal conservative, which is like what you claim to be? No, you're just like somebody who like takes like a, like an opinion like he dude i i ben shapiro is like the least political person if that makes any sense he just oh, yeah. kind of takes something that is in the uh what's the word like that's in kind of the public conversation yeah. where it's controversial and he'll just be the opposition of that and be like ah well uh the, this song wap is is, is 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 in fact uh very uh un um 
it, it, it's not doing what the feminists uh, had, had planned to do. <laughs> in fact, it is uh, showing off uh, 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 their, their, their genital. Oh, I'm like, shut Oh my God, you little I, fucking gremlin boy. Well, when, the, when the whole thing with the Mandalorian happened a few weeks ago with Gina Carano and be, with the comments she made on her uh, Instagram account about uh, wearing masks is like, being concentration camps and he was like i didn't find anything wrong with that you know i'm the most jewish person you'd ever meet and i think you all know that and and like i didn't find any offense i'm like do you need to brag about being jewish like he's such what? he's such he's such a little weird oh he makes I, me he makes me so uncomfortable i i, I can't he, he's like a cell if a salamander was real and was a human he just oh, he's, nah, dude, he, lo- he looks like a spiny spider monkey if you if you uh if you if you ever watched the show Recess when you were a kid the cartoon yeah. um, he reminded me of Randall from it yeah oh shit I, that's that's really that's yes, kind of star cool. yeah dude fucking yeah. yeah I'm glad we talked about Ben Shapiro in this podcast though it's, it's no, he's really just he's he's a not and it, the thing is there's a level there's you know a complete far left where there's you know AOC and Tlaib and all those people and Bernie Sanders and the Democrats and then there's center. Uh, like Gary Johnson, and then there's you know right, fine Republicans, normal like Mitt Romney and stuff like that. Then there's far right. Then there's people like uh, uh then, then there's some people like Ben Shapiro who are just way out there. Alex Jones, uh, Joe Rogan is starting to get out there a little bit from time to time. He's yeah. He, he, it doesn't he's, really yeah. follow an ideology. Yeah. I don't think. It, I think it's more just like what Trump did was create this like alternative. Oh I mean, yeah. Called the all right, like alternative type of media. I mean. I don't know. As much as I, as much as I like hate Alex Jones's opinions, it's really just. I, I don't they're put, think they're, they're putting I, chemical, chemicals on the water to make the fucking frogs gay. It's a gay bomb, baby. <laughs> or they, they like. He said this one thing on Joe Rogan. I like listened to a little bit of it. Uh, uh, just like, I may be a little like, retarded. He's like, he's like, listen here, Joe. Uh, 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 what, what, what they're doing in Korea and China is, is, is uh, human skin farms based on rodents. <laughs> And, and cows so there are humanoid rat people being created in in south korea look this up this isn't even which which what he said like about there being like artificial, a lizard. yeah like <laughs> like what what he said about like artificial limbs like being made from like rodents and stuff isn't like inaccurate like it's like that they're doing that in the united states too like they're like they're there is medical like things where they're trying to uh sort of uh like clone different uh body parts off yeah. of like different animals but to the fact that the motherfucker said there are humanoid people <laughs> who were created just like like frankenstein by fucking limbs that were grown off rats and cows is oh my god like well, the well, dude when, is so <laughs> out there when he said sandy hook was fake and it was all scripted and they're all actors I, I knew he was way out there and he was a fucking psychopath and the, the show when he still had a show on TV before he was canceled and when he was selling his growth pills and muscle pills he's he's a uh, he's a loony bin to say the least but that, that's what's happening nowadays where anything like that is possible with what had happened the last five years do you watch Vic Berger at all Nolan who's Vic he does, who, who's Vic Berger he does like uh he does all these like edits like where they're it's kind of like YouTube poop type edits but they're like but they're they're really good and like uh I he I think he was affiliated with the Super Deluxe company. Like, do you know like Super Deluxe? Like, no. they're like, do you know? Okay, do you know that YouTuber Much Dank? No. Who like? Okay, well then, fuck. I don't know. But yeah, I'll I'll send you a link to some oh, of yeah, his yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're they're funny. They're really funny, and they kind of have like do these weird. And he had the, he has a whole hour video on Alex Jones, like just <laughs> like editing the living shit out. Of it. It's really it's really funny. Well, but, um. Yeah. A friend of ours, which, uh, which we will get to later, huh? Mr. Uh, Joey Diaz. There was a clip of him when he was with Joe Rogan on, um, on the uh, Alex Jones show. But no, it's just it, it's what's happened the last years, and it, it's just um, ridiculous. But that's that's nothing new. It's going to continue how it goes, and it's just it's it's rough, and no one's going to want to say anything about it because you know they're too afraid to do it. But without further ado, um, I, I want to go into the, uh, and we'll talk about, you know, cancel culture later, but I want to go into the videos now. I have a hand, I have a lot of them, but I want to, I want to play and I'll get your reaction and stuff. So let's uh, share the screen. Let's share sound. Let's go to Google Chrome. Let's share. Last night, I got into a bit of a Twitter war yes. with my followers. 
<laughs> followers it ends up they all fucking hate your guts but i make yeah. it i watched this uh liberace movie okay and uh he's making out you know it's uh, <laughs> you know who plays him michael douglas yes For, first of all has pussy cancer yeah. in his throat <laughs> is making out with mad damon without wanting to get too specific this particular cancer is caused by hpv which actually comes about from cunnilingus i, I think cancer is a small price to pay to lick catherine zeta jones pussy <laughs> <laughs> I would. I you would, would take that chance. Yeah, I yeah. would. I would suck her tits for lupus. <laughs> for the chance. Yeah, the chance. <laughs> I would eat out her asshole for muscular dystrophy. <laughs> <laughs> for the chance. Yes, for yeah. the chance. <laughs> Catherine Zeta Jones has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Half the time she's Zeta, the other half she's Jones. <laughs> <laughs> or listen, that's Catherine Zeta Jones admitted she is bipolar half the time. She's deliriously happy, and the other time she has to suck an old man's cock. <laughs> That's dirty. Come on, man. Let's be. <laughs> I want to get back to your uh, Twitter yeah. feud. Okay. The followers. <laughs> no, I just maintain. Out of you. What happened? Oh, the follow. <laughs> no, I just maintained that uh, that <laughs> Liberace never was said he was gay, and then yeah. in this movie he's g sucking cocks and stuff, and I don't think you should do that. And they got mad at me on the HBO movie. They present him as a secret gay guy, and yeah. we don't really know that for sure. Well, I mean... He, he was a pussy hound. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you hear? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I loved Liberace, but with all due respect, man, if you kick that guy in the ass, a hundred cocks would fall out. <laughs> this, one's more of a, this one's more of a comment, really. Michael Douglas portrayed the flamboyant entertainer Liberace in the new HBO film Behind the Candelabra. I'd like to say something to Michael Douglas. I sang with Liberace. I, I knew, knew Liberace. Liberace. Liberace was a friend of mine. Michael Douglas, you're no Liberace. Uh, I'm sorry. Michael, <laughs> Michael Douglas was proud, like a proud kind of... Now, if you remember that joke, if you if you listen to that joke, that was a joke again about uh, the 80, 1988 uh, Republican uh, vice presidential debate between Lloyd Benson and uh, yeah, Glenn. yeah, no, I know, like I like is something about serving with a uh, Reagan, no Kennedy, Jack, uh, yeah. John, John F. Kennedy, and yeah, yeah, it was impressive. Um, no, the thing is, I played this video the last few weeks, and no one really laughed at it i mean they laughed at it a little bit but no one laughed at it and understood it as we do seeing for fans of uh of mr norm mcdonald but um yeah i mean i i, I get the like i i get the reference like uh yeah because i remember like the whole crowd like fucking standing ovation oh yeah well not even, not even that joke about uh uh liberace and jfk but this clip in general i'd play it and yeah. no one would laugh and they, they would understand it um it's just the thing is that's what's great about both of them because they'll just say whatever it is and hopefully it sticks to the wall and yeah he's he's unbelievable unfortunately both of them though they, they've had their fair share of cancel culture uh act, act, um instances but they're two of the greatest and it, why why for you though personally it is do you do you enjoy norm mcdonald and why he's you know as great as he is i just think uh, <sighs> Like I don't know, would you would you categorize like a lot of his comedy antics as like sort of like anti comedy in the sense that he's not necessarily he's like just kind of I, I don't know if you've ever seen this video. This was kind of how it perfectly illustrated it, but it's like uh, he's doing stand up at the uh, not stand up, but he's uh, he's do, uh, one of the roasters at Bob Saget's room. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember that clip. Yeah, and he's and he's purposely giving these like really, really like lame like jokes. Yeah, like 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 like, like, in, like like all these like kind of like shit that fucking like Carl Reiner and like yeah. uh uh what and um, Mel Brooks. Rodney Dangerfield yeah. would say. Yeah, like oh, oh um, yeah, no, I remember that and. Bob Sagan was laughing his ass off at it, but no yeah. one else found it funny. 
Yeah, I just also think you kind of get you really just a it's his reaction, like his yeah. re- reaction. He says something outrageous, like he's kind of just like what, like uh, yeah. like I didn't say anything. But also like just the delivery and like you kind of get like sort of blindsided. Yeah, by, like, like it will start off as like a pretty innocent thing, and then he'll like tell this really crazy out there joke and then just kind of look for the guy's response well, it's so the really thing, funny oh and the thing is there's a clip on youtube uh, you may have seen it it was a handful of years ago when he is on conan and he goes on a 10 minute rant, uh, spiel on a moth joke going to a pied- yeah. podiatrist and the I thing is that one and the thing is he, the thing is people don't realize that is that when he says this stuff he, he really go, practices it and goes over it and he yeah. did that at the end when david letterman retired the last time he came on and he really puts a lot of effort, effort into it, but it's his delivery. It's the joke itself because it doesn't make any sense what forever, whatsoever. And he, he's just, he's even, even I remember he shared the story and it's fake. It's, it's a fake story. And he goes on vacation and he goes to some, some beautiful place in Nova Scotia. Yeah. And um, he says what he thinks is a bed and breakfast and no one's there. And he knocks on the door and some old guy sleeping on the couch and he opens the door <laughs> And he's like, hey, you want to play, you want to play Scrabble? And it's like the guy's taking pieces and just making words like fart and hat and shoe and butt. And then he takes all the, em- there's no like empty letter. There's no like blank cards or blocks. So, and Norm's making like ubiquitous and big words. And this guy's just playing like hat on the triple letter score section. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, um, and then he wants to have breakfast the next day. He's like, you know, you're making your breakfast or I'm not that much of a breakfast guy, but get me two things from McDonald's. And he's he just, it, it, the joke, it wasn't even funny, but it's just his delivery. And that's, that it's just who he is. Um, I loved his podcast, which him and Gilbert Gottfried. Um, I think, I think one of my, uh, one of the top jokes, but I don't know if you saw the Nick Swartz in episode where he shares his 9-11 yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he, he's just, or the Andy Dick, there's just so many on there that are extremely, extremely um funny there, there was one i liked where um carl reiner was on and they're saying he's saying some joke and carl reiner was like um i shared this one joke it was the first one i made i think it was and he was like um i'm beginning to for, uh, i'm beginning to lose my short-term memory i'm beginning to forget my short-term memory and as he's saying the second part um adam jumps in he's like ah ha ha and he looks he's like i'm beginning to uh forget my short-term memory loss and then he goes a real sidekick and then uh Norm says, oh, real Ed McMahon. And then Carl goes, Ed McBoy. And <laughs> I, I, I laughed at that, but I, I love Norm. He's the funniest thing ever. I told my dad the 9-11 joke and he didn't think that was that funny, but I yeah, thought it no, was. It's, it's pretty, it's not, it's not like dinner. Time. Oh, no, it, it's not. It, I shouldn't laugh. It's not, it, I'm not saying it's like, it's funny. It's just how he delivered it. It's more, you just don't expect to be just shocked like that oh yes like he, he goes on the like and tells this like innocent story and then it just like completely like the moth joke for an example it's so brutal in the way he like because like, like the setup of that story is like oh, this yeah. guy like who's like who uh like wants to you know like he needs like psychiatric help and the moth is like talking about his life and like how depressing it is and like <laughs> and but it goes on for like 10 minutes and he's just like be, giving really brutal details about like this like depressed moth oh yeah <laughs> and then he's just like oh why did you come in here uh this is a dentist office he's like oh because the light was on like, yeah. you're just like like what the, <laughs> well, what the fuck <laughs> and i think is that makes conan go crazy I, another joke i like w- which is when he was on weekend update before he was fired was it was like 55 percent of women uh people say women are worse drivers than men and they're like, oh, and the crowd and goes, yeah. funny thing is, women wrote women wrote that joke, or a lady wrote that joke. And he's like, just kidding, we don't hire women. <laughs> and he, he's just, he's really honest, but he, I love him and the other videos after that. But um, here's another video. I found this on YouTube of Airsoft Fatty. It's a, it's a great one. Ah, uh, yes. Hey, I'm Talon, and this oh, is Ruckus, an and I'm going to show you how to start an online t-shirt business. Let's go. The sheep First, go to Shopify.com and start a you want to have a drink shield real fast in Fortnite? Here we have our shield juice, whole mug. Watch this. This is about the equivalent of a medium shield. So let's uh, chug this. It doesn't go, just go down his mouth, it goes up his nose. Damn. <laughs> Damn, look at those guns. Look at that 
hang on. I really oh like the POV God. shot. Fuck, man. Like, wait, what was he drinking? Uh, it was the, um, it was like the uh, Mountain Dew, that blue drink, the, um, oh, the Baja Blast. Yeah, the Baja Blast, I think. He was playing to be a uh, Fortnite shield. He guzzled that in 30 sec under 30 seconds. Yeah. That was like a Stein. He's uh he's pretty impressive. I, on a scale of one to ten, the cool guy scale, what would you give him? Well, I saw that whole documentary about him <laughs> and his like kind of weird friend. Just didn't his didn't his weird friend like like is he like really into arson and shit like that? I got no idea. I've never seen the documentary. Oh, you should watch it. It's pretty interesting. What's his face goes to his house. Oh, wow. It's wild. I think it's called it's called Full Force. Uh-huh. Um. On it, I I don't know. I'd be probably I would give him. I'll give him a seven. You know, seven. Yeah, that's what I'd give him. I mean, he's impressive. This next, the next two clips are one of our one of our favorite guys ever in the world. I Does could anybody... get stoned as a motherfucker and go on stage. So Friday I went to the store, and I swear to God, guys, I didn't eat nothing all day. I had smoked some pot, I worked out. Before I left the house, there was a little brownie, a 70 milligram brownie. I had like maybe 13 carbs left for the day. I was, <laughs> I was fucking starving. This little brownie is right there. It was a half a pack of an Anarchy Edible. They give you two brownies. Oh. Each brownie is 70 milligrams. That's so crazy. I That's so my, scary. I rub my balls with 70 milligrams. You understand me? 70 milligrams for Uncle Joey is, is like an aperitif. It's not even a fucking but explain to the rest of the world, 70 milligrams will put you into a fucking hole. Do you know I gave right? Lee 500 last night? He puked. <laughs> oh <my laughs> 500? Five, we split Jesus a Christ. We split a <laughs> Did you say 500 we milligrams? Split, we oh my split God. a thousand milligram edible. Did you hear that Carola. Alice in Chains song, Down in a Hole? Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen to me, Doug. We split it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, my God. What are you trying to prove? By 7 o'clock, I was so fucked up. <laughs> By 8 o'clock. And you know what? Usually when you eat, you tame that animal. Yeah. Fuck no. This turned on me. <laughs> this edible turned on me, dog, like a savage. He beat me into submissions. At one point, I had the cheese doodles that belongs to the baby pirate's booty. Yeah. They were on the floor. They were just coming out of my face. I was just stuffing them. <laughs> <laughs> I was just stuffing pirate's booty in my face in a pear. I couldn't stop. I kept eating peaches and pirate's booty, pears and pirate's booty, cantaloupe and pirate's booty. I must have ate the whole, even my wife was like, because oh, I had my back turned to them so they couldn't see me. <laughs> my wife's like, what the fuck are you doing in here? I go, listen, I gotta go to bed. She goes, go to bed already. I went to bed at 8.45. I slept till four. I got up, I didn't know where I was. I just laid there for 30 minutes like Mad Max. I just laid there all confused. <laughs> So you woke up at 4 in the morning and didn't know where you were? Solo. At 4.30, <laughs> I woke up with a ton of energy. A ton of energy. I went in the shower. I washed the car. I went for breakfast. Oh, my God. I was fucked up. And That's I kept so calling funny. Lee and saying, Lee, if the cops call you, don't answer the phone. He goes, why are the cops on the call? I go, I don't know, but don't answer the phone. <laughs> uh, who did? Dude, that, that animated thing of Joe Rogan is the most unsettling thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I don't know who does that. It might be one of the, might be the young Jamie who works for him. But um, it, it's just, I, I love Joey Diaz. He's one of my favorites. Um, the thing is, though, now that, you know, he's he moved back to New Jersey after uh, um, a few weeks when this whole thing started, his podcast is interesting. It's more serious, which I, I, I enjoyed the, you know, the church version where he was just doing whatever the fuck it was and wild and stuff like that and it was just you know he was just unbelievable dude, he's so ridiculously mean to lee oh yes and it, it was just funny dude he like he tortures him his his uh his danny brown interview they all take mushrooms right? yeah and they're all like you know having a good time and lee's fucked up like he's <laughs> really 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 high and he's just like hey would you want to do you want to split this uh uh 500 milligram edible and danny brown like danny brown i don't know if you know anything about danny brown yeah. he's like one of my favorite rappers but like he used to go hard like like with just drugs in general and he's definitely like he's like sure like whatever and like uh 
and Lee was like, Joey, I, I can't like, and and he Joe's was like, like, just eat it, eat it, cocksucker. You're gonna like, like it. You just like eat it, you motherfucker. Like, he's just like, you're gonna feel good. You're gonna see. It. You're gonna go see Disneyland. You know what I'm saying? And and like Lee was so unbelievably fun. like he was not having a good time. Clearly, it was really <laughs> fucking crazy. Yeah. It, it means, and that's an, and the other thing about Joey swimming to Norm is uh, Joey. Although he's got a lot of stories, my favorite one is but sis, Sister Hyacinth. Oh my um, god. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> but, um, he's like, this bitch. I'm gonna tell you. And these Italians. These white Italians are great because they don't give a fuck about anything, and they're feeding them, feeding them about milk. No more milk. No more milk. And he, he he's so out there. He doesn't care. He'll make fun of anybody, and that has got him into um, issues. Specifically, I should say not specifically. Specifically, I've recently when they talked about how he had to uh, uh suka la mink on him. Uh, yeah. When uh he a, a while like twenty years ago, but um he, he's just he's so out there, and that's why he makes Joe Rogan show so much so great because he, he you yeah. you can't prepare like I I I try to write down as much as I can for this show on notes, but with him you just let him free range and he's out of control. Yeah, do, do I mean like do I think do I listen to Joe Rogan show? Yeah, like I think he's had some really good guess do oh, i yeah. like really like him as a person not really yeah like i think he's kind of a he's kind of a tool but like yeah. he is i don't know he's he just continuously has like some of like the most interesting guests yeah which i think is well, like, especially especially when uh he had uh elon musk on the first time he, he had him smoking a uh, weed on the show and it became that uh international yeah, I mean, meme. yeah he uh when he had uh I don't know. He did. He did one with Joey and Tom Segura. That oh, that, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, I, I've listened to that a couple of times. Where he tells the story about like the like the, the hooker at like the comedy oh, yeah. show and like. His... She, where's my twenty dollars? Where's my twenty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I care about, dog. He cared about where's twenty dollars because if it wasn't. Wait, what do you say, one. dude? He's just like, yeah. Are you, is is that stuff you said true? Yeah, show me the monkey. Show, show me the monkey. It was a beautiful, a spotless, and clean. <laughs> I fingered it. I walked it. I played with it. I ate it out. It was delicious. Oh my, oh my god. Then I went out. Then I went on stage, dog, and she had a blast. I said, "Oh, I, I sucked a comedian's dick." And he, he's, it's just, and he doesn't care. Or the story he talked about when he did it with the lady with one leg. Yeah, and, that's, that's a good one. Too. Or um, or the, the, another one I love um. I think when he was 13, they're at some party and he was busted. And he's making out some girl in some outhouse or shed. And she, he does acid. And he's 13 yeah. or less. And she, her, her melons grow yeah. humongous, <laughs> the size of watermelons. Like, Holy shit, they're too big. I'm smothering them, dog. And he runs down and he runs away into the woods. Yeah, that's where he found his mom dead, right? Yeah, because they went home after that and she's dead on the floor after an o- overdose. And that that, that is it, the documentary that he made about himself was really really impressed i really like that on on youtube um yeah i gotta watch it i haven't seen it yet oh it's it's i didn't even know that was exist i didn't even know that existed Uh, i'll definitely watch that yeah i I forget what i think it's on youtube i'm not exactly i can't remember it's been a a year or two since i watched it but it was really interesting because it really described his life but he's or, or or the story where he gets mugged by a gay guy and him his friends jump from the trees and they jump down and one night he goes by himself and he gets beat up and he gets roundhouse kicked and punched in the face and interesting. Yeah, I haven't I haven't I haven't seen that one either. Um here here's another video. This is from the mom's house podcast with Joey on it. Oh uh, so yeah, I've seen real this. fucking questionable, right? There's definitely been some but I want to show you this clip of this chick and tell me <laughs> if she could get it back in Joey Diaz's crazy days. Go ahead. <laughs> It made Joey blush. I mean, you could tell by her eyes that if just chick suck your dick, she wouldn't leave you alone. Like you're dying. She's a stalker. Yeah. Look at her. Look yeah. at her. Everybody molested her. Yeah. Everybody. The That's teachers, her father, the neighbor. Yeah. Look at her. Look at her eyes. She's got crazy eyes. Everybody molested her. She's got crazy. Everybody. Everybody she bumped into did something to this girl. A finger in her ass. They threw holy water on her. They did everything they could. Look at her. She's fucking 
I've never, <laughs> I'm coming here like a fucking toilet seat. What the fuck on is wrong plane. with me? On a plane. <laughs> oh, man. That, she'd be fun because you could just tell this, stick your tongue up my ass. Yeah. And tongue it, I'm gonna jerk off on your hair. Yeah. And you're all in. She'd be like, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah that's a good thing. Well, that's the, that's what's the benefit about her. But, She's but, down for anything. But this filthy animal licks your tongue. You're gonna have an itchy asshole uh, for two years. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to go to the doctor. They're gonna put you in stirrups like they do to women. <laughs> yeah. Open deep and put like. like like What's a hat with a camera uh, and put cornstarch powder in your ass because you got rashes and shit. She's so nasty. <laughs> That's a nasty bitch. Take that off. Will you? I'd rather see a woman eat shit or something like that than like a fucking. That is toast. nasty. That's one of the nastiest things I've ever seen. Yeah, nasty, that is bro. nasty. I've never been with animals like that. I, I just dialed 911. <laughs> I throw them out and give them a lethal lethal dose or something. <laughs> Shut them the fuck up for an hour. I mean, isn't that one of the grossest things you've seen? I, you know, we've seen a lot of shit on the show. That has to be like top worst. Yeah, and by That's the way, bad. I respect her. I think she's just cool. What I is that in respect? Yeah, I don't know. what are you respecting, bro? <laughs> I just like that. That's who fucking the owner of New England should have fucked. You see a yeah, girl yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah. You give her ten thousand, she's gotta be retarded, something. <laughs> something something in her family's autistic. Something's going on. You give her thirty grand and you tell her, listen, after I fuck you, I'm gonna kill you. Just I'll, I'll cut a check to your family, they'll drop you off on the one seventy. You'll never find anybody. That's what you do with chicks like that. Yeah. Somebody in her family's dying. See, anyone else who said, would say something like that would be excommunicated from society in general but it's just joey is he's just he's one yeah. of a kind let's play this next video hey twitter world oh shit no oj mahomes shoot no well my bad my bad <laughs> <laughs> hey twitter world you know with me what worked for me what worked for me is you gotta do something you ever meet somebody that don't do nothing you yeah, meet somebody, yeah. they don't do nothing. Uh -huh. They don't do nothing. Like a, <laughs> they don't date. They don't, they don't do drugs. They don't play checkers. They don't do nothing. How long do you like those people for? You don't. I like people a little bit of edge to them. They got to do something. If you tell me I don't like alcoholics, but I love heroin, I'm in. If you tell me you, you suck toes for breakfast, I'm in. You got to do something. So when I made my decisions to get off the drugs and the, the nonsense, I said, there's got to be something. <laughs> You gotta do something. If you like toes, yeah. then you gotta suck toes. Yeah. He's, hey, man. He's, he's one of a kind. Yeah. The, the final thing um, I'm gonna end with is that, like I mentioned with, you know, Polly Walnuts earlier, mm. th there's a series, a, a television series that we both hold near and dear to our hearts that we have talked about many times before, it's The Sopranos. Uh, I, I briefly talk about The Sopranos, but I wanna uh, um, ask you first. I know it's kind of um, just random and in the moment, uh, if you can, let your top ten favorite characters um, in the show, or five. Damn, damn. I'll okay. Let me do this. One, I think, would just have to be Tony, just because like, but like, I'll, I'll rank the other cast of characters and whatever. Polly is probably number two. Sill is number three. Uh, uh, I. Uh, I don't, uh, Bobby. <laughs> Actually, I would put, I would put Uncle Junior before I would put Sill. Yeah. Because I think Uncle Junior has a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, let me think who else. I'm gonna, I, I like Carm a lot. I, I think yeah. she's really, she's, she's pretty funny. That whole scene with, uh, the, this, this orange, the, the orange juice thing, I it, think is. Yeah. I just for a uh, no pulp and there's some pulp in it, calm. I like pulp, but I like the one that says some pulp. Yes. Fuck yeah, um, you, Tony. And she just like throws the phone yeah. at, at him. Um damn, you're making me really go back. I liked Ralphie. I thought yeah. Ralphie was like a psychopath, <laughs> but I thought he was super funny. Um and yeah, I mean that's 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 five, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think my I think my um I'll do five as well, not ten. Um, I think definitely uh, now and no. Oh, I think number one though. Although in the first few episodes, the first little bit you kind of get annoyed by him, but definitely I think number one is Uncle Jun Uncle Junior, uh, Corrado Soprano. He's just the, the stuff they wrote him to say and his wit is. <laughs> unmatched with anyone else on the show i think definitely paulie's there he just doesn't give a shit about anyone and we'll say whatever he wants so it's joey yeah. diaz 
I think also who I like and it might maybe controversial is uh Feech. Um Feech, oh, yeah. he Feech, is is funny. An, Feech is another old timer who like probably can get himself in trouble but just doesn't care. Yeah. Um I think also I have to say um I like uh who else? Oh um I think a uh, oh, little Polly uh Polly Jr. <laughs> <laughs> that that scene between him and um and uh what's the guy's name that plays uh Eugene. Eugene. And they're at the they're at the um construction site and they're talking about the uh, um, you ought to know, sweetheart. And then he takes the snap and smashes it over his face and <laughs> Cassie goes, Oh. Um they all start laughing. Yeah, they like, all start like lying. He's like bleeding out of his cornea. The show, um the, the show the, the prequel, um the, the prequel to that is still not out yet. Um it's not coming out till September. It, do you what are your expectations for it now that it keeps getting pushed back and you're still interested in seeing it i don't know if i'm ever like like here i i think the sopranos is so perfect to me i probably will watch it just out of pure yeah. curiosity but like there is something there's nothing that's gonna like top that oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's incredible and it's so perfect in my mind and i feel like a little part of me feels like if i watch it i'm gonna be really disappointed oh yeah it's definitely the thing is though like yeah, sure. You definitely want the most people coming to see the movie in theaters, and definitely a pandemic doesn't happen at all. But I think the more they keep pushing, I think since they kept pushing it off, I don't think it's going to capture the same amount of audience that it would have if they kept it at the same date. And I, I think doing something like this, although David Chase, yes, is in charge of it and um, uh, in charge of the helm of this project, but nothing's going to top it. They can get all the actors in the world to play in the movies. They can get Joey Diaz. They can get a the guy who played Henry Hill and Goodfellas and all that stuff. And it's just, yeah. it, it, it's not going to be the same. It, it, I'm definitely interested in seeing it. It's going to be interesting. I, I definitely think that they should have gone the same adults still played um, Tommy's um, younger self's parents. Um, but, you know, they're obviously way older. Um, yeah. I, I think the actor who played the young junior soprano was probably the worst uh, <laughs> cast at first ever. <laughs> he reminds me of Randall from Monsters, Inc. He's so, he's got such a long neck and, but no, it, it's such a great show and program, and like like many other things, it wouldn't last in today's world with the stuff that it says. But um, it is what it is. But um, I'll I'll end with that. But I I, I seriously want to say that though, man, this this was this was fun. Um, I I really had a, you know great time going over you know having you on this week and going over all sorts of stuff with memory memory lane. Um. What's I say? I, I can't stress enough. Seriously, though, the gratitude and appreciation I have for you, you know, coming on this show, especially Please. filling in last minute, mean it means more than I can I can say. You're one of the the few besides Michael or a handful of other people who immediately, when I ask, "Oh, can you help me with this?" or "Can you come on?" you say, "Definitely, yes." Uh, that, that, that means a lot to me, since, you know, especially since we're all busy in the adult world. But it means more to me than you know words can express in all uh, seriousness. Um, of course, I, you know, of course. Down the road, definitely. Hopefully, you can you, you'll be able to come again. But this time, it'll be on you know the day that I hope that I scheduled on. I, I don't want to you know keep asking. Oh, hey, can you come on? You know, fill in last minute because it's definitely not great. Mm. But hopefully, by the time that happens, you know, Michael and yourself, and it'll be it'll be a a, a great episode. Like I said at the beginning of this program, if you like what you're currently viewing or listening to. Uh, do Brennan and I, along with everyone else here at Team Studios, a huge favor by liking, subscribing, and following the podcast, turning on bell notifications, as well as the important one, clicking that share button, letting everyone know what's going on all about this great show. Because, you know, we want everyone knowing this. You know, we want to make it big so eventually I can do it in public and stuff uh, like that. Um, because, you know, because to be honest, who wouldn't want to watch this great this, uh, watch this because when it really takes off and I'm out in you know LA doing it, you'll regret not being part of it from the beginning and joining us, as I'm sure the show will really raise. Uh, Brendan, along with myself, uh, clout level after this, you know, recording. Um, as I say that, as I say that, I leave you with this: a quote from the legend himself, someone who is a role model, Johnny Carson. I bid you all a heartfelt good night. This is No Dog and his guest this week, Brendan Doherty, signing off. I'll catch you next week for the for uh, for the season one finale episode with a special guest. Take everyone and stay mean and scheming. <laughs>